guys, my name is Susan Patrick, aka Suzy Suzy Savagi, and you're back on Surviving Lagos. You know, I always bring you guys good guests and like nice people, but you guys don't appreciate me enough. But today, today is the day that people must give me my flowers. You must give me my flowers. I have the one, the only, empower owner, business mogul, musician, like, ah, Mr. Easy, right next to me. Oh my God. Sir, it says you, like, can you spell can you, the pad padrock? Pad padrock P W A J. Are you from Joss? Yes. Ah, you guessed right. Uh huh. Oh shit, flat I know my shit. I know my shit. I can say shit here, right? Yes, can you can. Shit. Yeah, yeah. No, you can say. So don't worry. This is a safe space. Straight up. Per. So today we're talking about Japa culture, and who else to talk about it with? Lagos to London. That mm, album. I I think it's unfair to say like I'm. I'm representing no. Japa culture. Oh my god, no now. That's you see that's it's what happens. Like it's like now. okay, you're welcome to surviving Lagos. This is Susan <laughs> Patrick, aka Susie. But then on a more serious note, you've been just, able to Japa, but you still like came back and you still did a lot for Nigeria. Like you've been able to do Empower Africa. Like you're still here. Like you're here. We're shooting. Uh, this is Nigeria. the first time I'm actually being like somebody's actually saying like I've Japa. I don't. I don't know. You don't think you jackpad? Just in that chap. Did that jackpad? You don't think don't you know. did? Okay, maybe I actually did jackpad. <laughs> Lagos to London. Um. Okay, that's true. Exactly, you did, and like you haven't exact because I read a lot about you and I watched a bunch of interviews about you mm. and um you started in Lagos, moved to Accra, and then moved back to Lagos, and then moved to London. So obviously, like, do you think you've been in Nigeria for a while? No. Exactly. That's so. Ja <laughs> But it's not like I japa japa like that. You know, I feel, every time I think of japa, I feel like it's like when you save money and you just go, and then you just go, never no, to come back. It can again. be like just japa like and come back. Then that's like holiday. But it's not a holiday for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a holiday for you. Yeah. But yeah, I would like to know how it was like to move from like Lagos to Accra, like culture shock. Because obviously Lagos and Accra are like two different places. You know the biggest culture culture shock for me because it wasn't I didn't move so first off like it wasn't it wasn't even Lagos Lagos it was like I was living in Songo water that's where I grew up like why are you laughing at Songo it's just the way you say come it. on man Songo is like is Songo is like small London come on man we have Covenant University we come have on. the Bells Junior School we have Indomie we have there's some gin company you we see have, you remember it yeah we have Igoma Day High School you know, you got. We have Winners Chapel. We have Asarudin. Repping Shongo. Yo, Rapping. like we have so many. We have a bridge, like a flyover bridge, and we have Obasanjo Farms as well. Okay, but you left all of that. Yes. Yeah, so, so basically, I left that and mm -hmm. I went to Kumasi. Mm. So not even Accra, Kumasi. So the biggest culture shock was, I think, my mom actually told me I was supposed to go to Canada for school. Mm -hmm for uni and my mom was like this time i'm like 15. hi guys i don't know about you but sapa has reached me and you have choke if you're looking for an additional source of income i am so happy to introduce you to octa fx octa fx is a trusted forex broker with over 11 years of experience 12 million accounts in over 150 countries octa fx has free educational materials daily trading ideas and a transparent trading condition and for nigerian users if you deposit money into your trading account, you can get it credited in less than minutes. Can you sign up using the link below and use my promo code SUSAN100 to double your first deposit? And my mom says, oh, my mom and dad and my sister, everybody is like, oh, it's almost the same thing. I don't even understand how I believe that. <laughs> it's almost the same thing. <laughs> but then... Is it? No. And like, I remember staying in the hotel and that day they brought what is now one of my favorite sauces in the whole world. is shito. Oh, I've never tried that. What? I've never tried it. Okay, we need to, we need to invite you to Accra. Per. In fact, you have to go yeah, to Kumasi. And then you have yeah, to, yeah, you have to yeah, eat the crowd. But basically, that day, like when they brought the rice mm -hmm. and I... The shito is like, there's like crayfish, there's mm -hmm. dried pepper. Like I almost threw up. I was like, the the smell, I wasn't used to it. Okay, I have a question since we're talking about food. Yeah. Nigerian jollof or Ghanaian jollof? Come on, man. What's wrong with you? 
This is surviving Lagos. Uh-huh. <laughs> Answer quickly. You are taking time. You are hesitating. Let me check my. Ah. Let me check my. You are still hesitating. Let me check my Patek. Oh, Philippe. sorry. I actually just I actually just add jollof. Which one? Yeah, my mom's jollof is the best. So that's and it's Niger. It's Niger. You're hearing it. Uh, oh, you Ghanaian people coming for it. Uh, I don't Niger know what it is about this jollof thing, man. Is it? Uh, is it competition? <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? But yeah, that was the biggest shock. The biggest shock was, was the food. food. Yeah, but mm-hmm. and I think it was the food. That was the biggest thing. And then I think the second thing was the music. The music was just different. <laughs> and also the clubs. You know, I I remember like, that was, we'll, we'll go to club and we'll be dancing. And I remember coming out of, of this thing, of the club one day and telling my guy, I was like, yo, all these girls are feeling me, man. Dude. So, <laughs> And then he told me that all those girls I was dancing with, they were like working. And I was, I was like, <laughs> shout out to Vienna City, shout out to, um, what's that place? There was one club, chess, not chess bar. There was one club, basically. Nah. Yeah. So I so think like that was the biggest club in shock. Lagos, Accra, Accra. Um, right now I like I like Twist. That's my favorite club in the world. That's in Accra. Okay. Yeah. That but I think sense. in in Lagos, I I went clubbing yesterday. In Lagos, is like almost too intense. Mm. Like it's almost everywhere you go. Like. There's so many bad guys, you know, I'm and then to, and then all the girls are just hill. like plenty girls just looking fly, just like that's the whole point of clubbing. Yeah, though. but I'm like, man, it's too much for me. Man. Oh, you want to wear pajamas to the club? Exactly, and chill. I want to just like oh, no, wear flip flops and just <laughs> everybody's no. just going ham. Okay, so how was it moving from Accra back to Lagos and then to London? From from Accra back to Lagos, it was it was out of necessity. So I was I don't know if I've said it before, but I was I was I was done with uni mm-hmm. and then I started doing all these businesses and business it, it, it ends up that the business I was doing was f- you know for foreigners, it was illegal and I didn't want to go to jail. So I wasn't selling drugs, by the way. See the Yahoo? way you're looking at me. I wasn't doing Yahoo. Okay. I was I was selling gold. But, oh. but it's like for small, small, there's small scale mining, large scale. But the small scale is for mm-hmm. locals, like to, to you know, support locals. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if I continue doing this thing and I get arrested, I'm going to go to jail. That's not fun. So I'm like, okay, let me move back to Nigeria. <laughs> And go and look for which of my uncles is gonna give me money so that I can go back to Ghana and continue the what mining. You want to do? And I end up Zagadat. Do you know what's funny? Now that I can remember, you performed at my school. Like oh, for 20, real? What school? Doen. 2016. With like your hats at the back. And I can remember it was like prom. And like yeah. everybody was like, ooh. And I was just there like, okay. Ooh, <laughs> yay. Wow, now I'm feeling old. <laughs> my school from and then that's like my freshest memory about yeah. like that was the only time I like I saw you and I can remember like I think it was I can't remember what song but there was this song I think it was leg over everybody was going crazy yeah. I was like were well, you, you going guys. crazy um yeah that's good you know when people vibe around you you see you catch the vibe even though you don't know the song you're like yes yeah. Yes, so you're saying you go. didn't know the song no at the time no I didn't you're telling I'm me being you know honest I'm be- but now I do you know Play I'm going to. I'm. This play is the, this song. is the part where I walk out of no, this podcast. Play any song, and I will sing it back to you. Play any song. But you know what's funny about being here? I'm going to digress a little. Is mm-hmm. is like, I remember messaging you. Mm-hmm. So <gasps> I actually just remember, like, is is when I was coming inside here. I was like, okay, yeah, I remember messaging you. No, it was not even inside here. It's like when I was coming, I was re- I just yeah. scrolled because we were chatting. Mm-hmm. Like, I just scrolled and I'm like, oh yeah, I messaged you and then I just ghosted. Yeah. <laughs> Guys. Yeah. But FYI, it wasn't like message to like slide into no, DM. No, it was to, business. Yeah, it was it was business. I was like, I actually said you should do it. Like yeah, uh, you should come you, up with a show idea. And I did. And you should do. But like the thing about me is like I have like multiple ideas and they just like come like this. And and it's like when I'm on it, if I don't 
do it immediately. Then it's just, and then I don't see it again. Mm-hmm. So I, I think your reply got lost in the DMs. It's fine. It's fine. You have like a thousand DMs. Don't worry. Mm, I'm sure you do as well. How many DMs do you? I don't really have a lot of DMs. Nobody, the, the people don't be. No, people nobody don't be sliding, my DMs. No. Sliding into your DMs. Not, not okay. at all. Okay. <laughs> I'm a good, I mean, small girl, so they don't do that. Okay. How old are you? I'm 19. Okay. Do you know okay. every guest that has come here has asked about my age? No, it's good to ask. Like when she said, like, oh, I'm a small, I'm <laughs> like, okay, let me, let me ask, you know. Okay. So you said moving, um, from Accra back to Lagos was a necessity because yeah. like you were running away technically. So from, from Lagos now to I was London. going back to greener pastures. Oh no, you're sick. Okay, so, so I, wait. So I you're went to Accra wait, was going. I f- went to Accra for school. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Not to Japa. Okay. For school. Okay. And then you returned. And then I stayed to start business. Okay. And then I needed money, aka greens, right? Greener pastures. So, so I went Lagos. back to Lagos to go get money so that I can go back to Accra. But you didn't end up going back to Accra. You Not went immediately. Yeah, I went London. to London. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you carried the money and you went to London. Hmm. Actually, no. I came I came to Lagos to get money for that business. Mm-hmm. I started another business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in between, I just go record. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Young Six. Young Six was like one of my biggest customers <laughs> for buying phones. He and his guys, they just break their phone, buy a new one, break their phone, buy a new one, break their phone. So they're my best customers. But basically, um, that's 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 why I came back, and then music, mm-hmm. music started to blow up. I I didn't think it was gonna be the thing. I I promise you, I thought I thought I was gonna be like Dangote. Oh, but you understand? I mean, so I didn't even know I would be like on stage singing and all of that. I, I, you know, I, I love it, but I didn't, I didn't know at the time. So when that one came, mm-hmm. most of my first fans started in, you know, um, in Accra. Mm-hmm. And then the, the next fans, you know, I did a show in London before I did a show in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And I did Lauren Hill. The first time I went to the US was for Lauren Hill. I wasn't even yet a professional musician. musician. I wouldn't have called myself a musician. I was so like, I remember coming on this stage, seeing all those crowd with my hat and <laughs> some guy in playing the guitar. And I was saying, I go I for ginger, you make me burn cool. And when Lauren Hill came behind the backstage, mm-hmm. she was, she asked for me. I, I was like, Wow, Laurie Hill is asking for me. Oh, my man, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> for I remember even going to the visa. You know, part of Jack Biden is like going for visa. Visa anyway. process, yeah. So I remember going to Abuja for the visa um, processing. Shout out to my guy, Olawali, who filled like my form and <laughs> got me dates. Um, and I I literally told the guy, those guys interviewing, I'm like, mm-hmm. please, oh, this this. They've been emailing me that it's Lauren Hill. I'm not even sure it's Lauren Hill. Please help me check that this <laughs> is, is it really Lauren yeah, Hill. real. And then they went back like 15 minutes, came back, everything checks out. Come, I think it's two days or one day. Come mm-hmm. to, to pick up your passport. It's like, wow, I'm actually going to America. I'm really I traveling. didn't even have a manager, man. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, 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 I didn't have a manager. Oh, that's crazy. So like my next question is like, obviously you're a business mogul. Mm. And I, I just feel like, Maybe just because of the type of person I am. I feel like when I'm doing something, like something else suffers. So like if I'm working, then my like family life and like emotional life is suffering because mm. like I'm literally like pushing away emotions and everything. Mm. But like you, you have business, you have music, you have family. Mm. Like, do you think anything suffered? Mm. I think it's always a constant battle to find balance. Mm-hmm. Because it's for a long time, I realized that I wasn't spending time with my family. So my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my baby sister, she's not even so much a baby. She's like 23, wait, 23, 24. I think she's 24. She's not a baby. <laughs> yeah. But she, she, the other day, for the first time, me and her like had dinner, just mm-hmm. me her, and my friends in London because she's doing her master's. And she, she was, she said something that was very like profound. She's like, she was telling my friend, she's like, oh, a lot of the stuff I know about Tosin, I learned from interviews. And I was like, oh, wow. whoa. You know, so that's how much I wasn't around. So like 
some some years ago i just kind of realized that oh i've like i things like i people they'll tell me something that is happening within the family I'm like oh when did that happen why didn't nobody right. tell me um so i started to pay more attention like right now i'm just coming from seeing my mom my dad my nephew my niece you know um we love a good family you know, man. so it's 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 about finding balance, balance. and so sometimes you know it affects friendships you know it affects you know the person you're with so me i'm i'm now more consciously trying to find balance and real before i used to think everything was different mm -hmm. like the music mr easy as a musician is here yeah, and tosin is here but now i've just seen the Merged. light <laughs> And I just feel like everything is, is Together. one. It's still yeah. me. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, you're like, you're a daughter. You're somebody's daughter. Mm -hmm. You're somebody's... Do you have a brother or sister? No, I'm the only child. Only child. So mm -hmm. you're somebody's niece, right? Yeah. Somebody's cousin. You're someone's cousin. Mm -hmm. You're someone's friend. You're someone's enemy. Like, you could be different things to <laughs> different people. I don't but know if I'm making sense. You are. A hundred percent you are. So... I watched an interview where you said like um, at the time you said you didn't have like a car because yeah. you felt like it wasn't necessary and like yeah. a liability and everything. So like are you still at the, at the point where you feel like it's still not necessary and No, I have, I have a car now. A car? I have, I have one car. Wow. I have one car right now. Um, and I've been thinking of getting like... There's this car with the enter my eye. This <laughs> Rolls Royce Colina. Uh -huh. Is it hey, is it Colina? That's the one. Yeah, that car the enter my eye, like black and like red interior. Woo! <laughs> so you're paying oh, on Lord. getting a car. <laughs> I'm not the what? I'm not a ceiling fan. <laughs> I don't want to be a mechanic, I want to be a baller. I'm telling you. So <laughs> And, but but at the end of the day, whenever I, whenever I think of, whenever I'm thinking about it, I then realize that mm, is it maybe really it's not necessary. necessary. Maybe it's not necessary. Yeah. And it's like I was talking to my friend, and he was saying, I can just rent the cars Her. because you know you know what's so painful. I bought my car in 2020, 2021. Brand new model Range Rover Autobiography. Blah blah blah. The other day I saw another one. I said, hey, there's another new car again. <laughs> so it's a pain. It's painful yeah, because then you see, and it's it's like here, you can't do those trade-offs. Mm -hmm. Like in some countries, you could just take your old car, drop it, you know, top up, or mm -hmm. you've not even finished paying for this one. You get the next one, you know, where credit works, but you can't yeah. do it here. So it's it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's annoying because yeah. you then have that, do, that car. It's no more... It's just there. Yeah. A new one is coming. Everybody a new is one is coming. About so it's one. like, it's if like you iPhones. can rent. Yeah. But iPhones are cheaper. Cheap, obviously. You but know, like, you're talking thing. about like, you. if you like, I don't know how much that Range Ro that, that um, Rolls Royce cost. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> should look into that. But I'm sure it's like, <laughs> it's probably over like seven, uh, over 150 million. Mm -hmm. Dang. I mean, it's you. That's a lot I mean, money. it's him. Like, if somebody can just dash me that money right now. Oh, don't worry. In my next life, for I'll everybody that is you. watching this, um, Susan's fans that have money, you know, just tell your daddy, tell your daddy, tell your mommy that if you have money, to, it's not Mister Easy. Like you want to so. contribute for Mister Easy's car. It's I, me. I see that they be gifting Big Brother Nigeria people's oh cars, so God. they should just give me a car. But look Thank at you the very much. Them. God bless you. <laughs> I'm dead, please, I can't. Yeah. Okay, so you had talked about a relationship. Do you have a car? No, I don't. Why? Um. So my mom says this thing and she's like, oh, if you want to buy a car, make sure you can buy two. And I don't think I can buy two yet. Mm. Are you an Ajebo? Yeah, I would okay. say that. I'm an Omo Gets Inside. I don't think I'm an Ajebo. Which one is Omo? That's Omo the first time I'm hearing this. It's like when you know like your parents are like, oh yeah, yeah, enter inside. You need to be inside ah, now. Ah, okay. So yeah. you are like Ajejam kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that. So, like, she's always like, if you can't buy two, then there's no point. But you know how one. to drive? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, how do you move around? Uber. Uber? Mm -hmm. Or oh. my manager. Whatever one. Or sometimes we rent cars when you're trying to, like, go yeah. somewhere fancy. And when you rent, you drive? No. 
Okay. Driver drives. And uh, when you go out clubbing. Oh, we rent cars. Your mommy l- lets you go. Yes. Funny, she, my mom follows my Instagram. She knows me. She, ah, sorry. Mommy, if you're ah, watching this, good. you should When know. I become a daddy, I want to be able to tell my daughter, like, yeah, go have fun. <laughs> me. Oh, no. my. <laughs> I will tell you that Jesus is watching you. <laughs> but she knows She knows her daughter. Yeah. I just think I just think it's, it's tough, you know. I mean, parenthood is tough. Yeah. But I you think, have to trust your child. Yeah, you could, tr- you trust, but like, even I'm saying like, even my siblings sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, I remember my elder sister, the first time she drove, I was like getting paranoid. That's like <laughs> looking at her, like she's this girl, this one is <laughs> no going to, tr- this one I'm not serious, you know? So, yeah. So you spoke about relationship. Mm-hmm. And then, um, obviously, like, celebrities always hide their relationships. Like, they don't want it private. So, I want to know... Oh, they don't want it public. Public, sorry. They don't want it public. Yeah. I want to know why you decided to come out public. Like, do you think it has something to do with the fact that, like, it's Femi or Ted Allah, or it's, like, just, like, because you wanted to come out public? There's no... There was no... There was no thinking, to be honest. Like, mm. and one thing that happens is, like, before you know... Sometimes before something happens, like for instance, like I think I said this on my podcast, like I was engaged for two weeks before like the world knew I was engaged. Mm -hmm. So it's like I could be married right now. And we wouldn't know. And you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm not just wearing Wearing my ring. So it's just how you feel. It's just, it's just how you feel. Like, you know, it's not everything that should that, be outside. You know, should be out. Like I've never ever posted. I think I posted my mom and my dad once and I posted like an old picture of them <laughs> for their 30th marriage uh, anniversary. Cause like, I think, I don't think this, this celebrity life, this fame is like, he's lovely. We thank God. But like, it's not super healthy. You know, you, you don't want to like just put everything and put your family and mm-hmm. every and your friends and everything through there like i just think so like for relationships especially like family i just try to 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 select like i've never posted my niece or my nephew when they were kids and nobody can recognize them mm-hmm. yes but like now no. so that their school people say ah oh, yeah mr <laughs> oh, come on man like <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. I so I've, I feel like fame is crazy, man. We, man, it's a blessing, and but it, it could be a curse and it's a drug. You, you know, facts, it's actually a drug because yeah, then you just drug. keep on wanting more, you want more, and then you side don't effects. stop. Yeah, yeah. So How's you, it dating in Lagos? Like, it's crazy. Have, have you dated in Lagos? Yeah, I you have. have. I mean, were you ever in Lagos? Yeah, like, like. Back in the day when I was like, I don't know if I, yeah, back in the day, back, back, back in the day, back in the day. How was it? It was like you? ordering Uber for your babe, um, taking her to cinema, oh. um, <laughs> going to the place. <laughs> the place? Actually, the place used to be like the place. So like during break, like, because we're working. So during mm. break, like just drive to the place mm. so. You know, go buy Amala somewhere, That's then so over the weekend, you know, or sometimes get a hotel, mm-hmm. just chill. Um, so one word for like when you dated in Lagos for the experience. One word. Yes. Ah, oh, man. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. My word is chaotic. Chaotic? Yeah. Why? Because it's chaos. Mm. Like Lagos is so small. Everybody knows everybody. I don't like that. Then imagine thinking Lagos is small and then going to... Lagos is like, what, 20 million people. Mm-hmm. The whole of Ghana is like 30 million people. The whole of of Republic of Benin is like 12 million people. So Kotonou might have, what, 1 million people. Like, yeah. you will... Lagos, um, nah. I don't advise it. For your I mental health, you shouldn't uh, do it. Okay. Don't do it, sis. It's not necessary. Work, focus on your bag. Okay, focus on your bag. <laughs> focus you on heard it. that. <laughs> focus on it. So what makes Mr. Easy, Mr. Easy? And what makes Tosin, Tosin? Everything. I, I'm like, everything is one. Mm. I'm just like a, a dreamer. Mm. 
And once I have an idea, I'm obsessed with the idea. If I can pursue it, I just want to pursue it. I don't care if it's going to be profitable. Mm-hmm. And this is not even now. Mm-hmm. This is this has been how it has always been. There was a tweet I said, I'm going to spend all my money chasing my dreams. Mm-hmm. Like, And that's facts. Like, I would use, like back when I was in school, I would use my school fees mm-hmm. to go and throw a party. <laughs> Like, because I had this idea that if I invest in these parties, the parties will become very big and I'll make money. Did you ever make money? Yeah, 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 I did. Please, oh, people that are watching this, don't Please, use your Please, disclaimer, do not <laughs> use your school fees <laughs> God, to throw me. party. Please, use if your school fees, in fact, parents, just pay the school fees directly. directly. To the school don't give it to people like your kids, like, like me. Because my dad and mom had to bail me out at some point because people were just... I. I was owing school fees <gasps> and then I couldn't tell them and I almost couldn't write the exam. And I think somebody went and snitched on me. Good. At that time I was upset, but thank God they switched they snitched Good. on me. Yeah. I agree. So So what's the story behind Empower? I want to be sent to Empower, I can sing. You see, so the thing is you don't even have to be a singer really? to work with Empower. What Empower is like what what the, the vision I have for Empower is to be an Uber for creatives. So mm. like you connect. And so you connect to services like management services, like finance services, mm-hmm. like, but you still do your own thing. Mm-hmm. Like Fave is signed to, you know, her own label. Mm-hmm. And then she, she put out, she put out her first single, her last album with, Empower, but mm. she's signed to her own label. That's crazy. You know, Joe Boy has his own thing, um, his- Young Legend, mm-hmm. but he passes through Empower. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm, I'm, I have my own thing, Banku Music, but I go through Empower. You know, uh, who is acting? You should check out mm-hmm. who is acting. You know, who is acting? You know, everybody has. So it's like, it's just supposed to be an aggregator for creatives. So mm-hmm. not just singers not just singers like even mm-hmm. influencers like mm-hmm. singers influencers dancers i'm about to invest in like i don't know if i should be saying this here but Say i'm about it's... i'm about to invest i'm thinking about investing in like some dance there's a dance company i'm looking at investing in um you know a producer so we have mm-hmm. more producers than uh, than artists. artists than singers you know more producers so it's just that's it like for and just for africa you know djs we have two djs working with empire dj neptune oh um, really yeah dj neptune um major league djs from oh, wow. south africa i didn't you know that. so it's not like it's not a label mm-hmm. it's just like you it's a services company like for creatives and in the future i want people to be able like creatives to be able to see empower as like a bank you know, so if you want, if you wanted to go on this worldwide trip oh, and just shoot content, mm, that makes a lot of sense. Can you go to? I don't want to name any bank, but can you go to any bank and say, "Hi, my name is no, Susan. I need no. fifty million <laughs> to travel the world and shoot content." See, eh? What's when you travel, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm just going to be looking fly. Even travel agencies don't even do that for you. Exactly, anymore. but. You should be able, but you can come to an empire because empower would understand. You, you can be, sure. be a movie maker and mm-hmm. come to empower and say, "Hey, this is my, mm-hmm. th- this is my credibility." And it's like that's why I reached out to you. I was like, yeah. "I want you to start a show, come mm-hmm. up with an idea, mm-hmm. and I'll fund it." Like that's what empower okay. empower does. Yeah. So you guys, if you are listening, if you have somebody that is a DJ, artist, influencer, dancer, whatever, empower is the place that you should. One thousand percent. Me too. I'll come and I'll slide into Empower's DMs. Hi. One thousand percent. This evening, I'll, you just saying slide. One thousand. One thousand. One thousand. Okay, so Patek. Yeah. <laughs> Any money I get, I deflex. I devote Patek. That song. What is the story behind this? Because I watched the, an interview where you were like, "Oh, you're not going to get a Patek yet." Yeah. Because I can't remember what you said, but like, why now? So why did you finally get Patek? Why did you now finally drop the song? Uh, you said, oh yeah, you said, I'm not going to get a Patek because I need to own a Patek or something. No, because like, it's expensive. And it's like, why would I spend a lot of money 
on a wristwatch when like your phone can tell you the time. <laughs> Facts. And people say, oh, it's not a wristwatch, it's a timepiece. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's an investment. Yes, but <laughs> me, I'm a village boy, do you understand? <laughs> For us, it's wristwatch. Mm-hmm. We can wear Casio, do you mm-hmm. understand? And I also don't like a lot of things in my hand. Like mm-hmm. for the longest, I've just had this. Mm-hmm. This is a gift. This is a Van Cleef. It's like v- just very simple. You see, it's almost like wearing those Wrist rubber. Things. Yeah, from school. Like when you were in school. Yes. So like I like it, right? So I never saw, but then I got my first Patek. I didn't mm-hmm. even, I didn't buy it with my money, but I got my first Patek and it was like, Good. it was a lot of money. God, I don't want to be a mechanic. Do you understand? I want to be I'm a not, partner. I'm not going to drop figures, but it was a lot of money. And I was like, I'm, when my friend saw it, he's like, ah, you will see, you know, go. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah I'm Patek. <laughs> and then I was, I, I was, I was doing like this, like. <laughs> This is not the one. This is another one. And I was like, ah. Uh-uh, so you have is, more than two now. Yeah, now I have I have more than two to my God, I don't want to be a mechanic. I want to be but a But it's not father. for, do you understand? But I didn't buy, don't get me that. I've not, I've not bought yes. my money yet. Mm. Do you understand? So I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, I'm I'm wearing this thing. I like the feeling mm-hmm. of like people seeing me and saying, oh, mm-hmm. you got a Patek. Like, oh, what Patek is that? Is that the special edition? I'm like, hey, oh, this is nice. <laughs> You know, so I go to South Africa. I was supposed mm-hmm. to jump on a song mm-hmm. and I started, you know, that studio session was the worst studio session. I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I was about to leave the studio. I was frustrated because I spent money mm-hmm. to book that studio. And you have those kind of days where you're just like, am I even talented? God, <laughs> am I the one that sang all this song? Are you sure it's me? You know, and I was just about to leave and I said, okay, let me do that song. Mm-hmm. So... I called Joey B and we just start rapping it. And I just like, any money where I get, at the flex, at the ball, you the vest, at the shop, Patek, she you see fly ball in the jet. And that's because I've been flying jets recently. So everything in that song is real. Do you understand? So it's just how I was feeling. It's like, I was just feeling fly. I was just like, um, uh, yeah, this like boy don't, yeah, like it has Yeah, like this boy don't have my own. <laughs> Tell my mommy. Do you understand? So, so yeah, that's it. That's, that's, so that's, that's how I made the song. So mm-hmm. it was a very fast song to be made. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, I send it, we send the acapella to DJ Tariko. For Kalistic was supposed to be on the song. I should mm-hmm. even hit him up to do remix. his remix. I Her. should hit him up. Thank you for reminding me. I would and remind you, sir. Yeah, next thing I send it, I post it up on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was never supposed to be a song. I post it up on Instagram. It was just on my laptop, there's vibes that I just create and I'll never put out. Maybe yeah. I'll just start putting them out now. So I put it on my Instagram and everybody's like messaging me. It's like DM me. Even people, people that have not even say, easy, how are you doing? The people that didn't even tell me congratulations on your engagement. <laughs> And, you know, I Faust sent his verse. Mm-hmm. So Faust actually sent his verse and mm-hmm. we're putting out the Faust version soon. Her. Maybe in like two weeks. Um, and, the nec- and the next thing is, you know, I send it to Joey B to do his verse. He does it. We arrange it. I'm like, wow, this is actually a thing. And, we, and I put it out and I enjoy it. I enjoy that song because I think mm-hmm. it's, I love the songs I've been recording on my album. They're serious. Like, mm-hmm. Like the real songs, but I think like the serious and it's like people just want there's too much the serious vibe. stuff going like on right just now. Chill. So maybe just chill. So I yeah. Yeah. So that's that's it. That's and the story we had Patek. Yeah, and big shout out to everybody that's been playing the record, supporting the record, um, including yourself. Um yeah, God bless you guys. <laughs> big shout out to Blessing and Power Africa doing a mad job. Yeah, bless it. it. Blessing, I love you. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, so this is one of my last questions. What do you think about people that leave like Nigeria to find greener pastures abroad? And do you also feel like Lagos is a small London? Because you know, people always say like Lagos is a small London. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. People live in Nigeria to go find greener pastures. By all means, if your heart tells you to go to anywhere, like, you know, do some research. But like, if your gut tells you to leave, like mm-hmm. leave, like I'm, I don't, I don't hate that. My mind told me go to London. I went to London, you know, go to Accra, go to Accra, go to 
This year I've spent the most time in Cotonou this year. I've lived the most, the longest period mm -hmm. in Cotonou. Like you might ask like, why are you in Cotonou? Mm -hmm. But like, I'm enjoying it. And that's where my mind told me to go. Mm -hmm. So I, I have no beef with it. I think like, but I just think it's important to sort of have a plan and sort of like know, have an idea of where you're going. Like, you know, so that you don't enter trouble because things on that side are tough. Like I remember the first time I went to Yankee and it was snowing and I saw people homeless. I couldn't believe people were homeless. First of all, I said, ah, so Yankee people are homeless. They don't have a house. And it was cold. Imagine being cold in this snow and not having a house. Like, Rah. you know, but at the end of the day, you just got to do what you got to do mm -hmm. to survive. I mean, oh, survive. Surviving Lagos. Yeah. Okay. So give me tips on, how you survive Lagos? How you survive Lagos mm -hmm. is number one, trust no blood clot. Facts. <laughs> you can't Facts. be out there trusting. Mm -hmm. You you got to you know number two, shine your eye. I know that's almost like the same thing. Um, number three is when you find somebody that or you find friends or family that that are going hard for you like keep them around you know, try and keep them like it's, it's tough but especially blowing up and all of that but try and keep them um always always find a hustle like find a hustle because this this lagos is like jungle. is a jungle so find a hustle don't smile too much <laughs> smile but you know be nice but let people know say if they fuck up, you will treat their fuck up. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think those are my, those are my tips for, for Lagos. Okay. Yeah. So my tip for this episode has to be focus on your grind. Mm. Like people would leave you, your grind would never focus on your grind. It's That's like, it. why are you sounding pained? Like every well, time pained you're like, oh, every you're episode. like, oh, this, um, your hustle will not it leave you. Your grind will not no, leave you. No, but it's actually true. Can is, your grind leave can, you? Is, should we start? Should I do a psychoanalysis? I mean, you can. I you, don't mind. But you've not paid me. I can do a therapy. I can be your therapist. Anyway, no worry. yeah, focus you on your voice. grind. I'll send it to you. They'll send it to you. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so 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 much for coming on my show, Mister Easy. I had a an amazing amazing time. You guys, by the way, I had been excited about this episode since like two, three days ago because I messaged him and I was like, and he was like, yes, I'm coming. And I was like, yes, let's do this. I've been excited. It almost didn't happen. Almost didn't happen. Almost didn't happen. Yeah. Yes. Almost didn't happen. But God, you know. Give thanks. Give thanks. Boom, boom, boom. But thank you guys. Love you. See you in my next episode. Mwah.